Um, okay, and so we're live on YouTube, but uh, YouTube, uh, we have a small issue, and that is that um, the the small issue is that um, my cable connector cable is not available, so I'll have to try to use the blackboard. Now let's just see if I can, how do I do that? You, I want me to be, I don't want to take a picture of myself, just give me a second. No, um, I can do this, I can do this. Cameraman, is this what I want to do? <laughs> Opening cameraman, oh no, this is a big mistake. Uh, present to everyone. Okay, hang on. Uh, just a few more seconds. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I can do this. Just give me a second. Yeah, I'm going to speak fine. I'm going to leave. I just need to find out how to do this. Hide from broadcast. No, I don't want to hide. I want to show my camera. Okay, YouTube doesn't want me to do that. Okay, fine. It's fine. We shall just do it another way. And that is that um, we can do a screen share. Desktop. Fine, so that's working. And then we need to switch on image mate. Sorry, this is all for YouTube, but this is a good experiment. Let's see if I can show, turn the camera on here. Okie dokie. Oh, it's upside down. Uh, how do I turn it the other way around? Hang on, YouTube. I think I can do this. This is the roof. Those are the people in class, but of course they're upside down as well. And here are the people, the right way up, and this is excellent. So I have one single whiteboard to write on, but we will all be happy. I think I need to switch off this little light. And then if I can find it. Yeah. Didn't do much help. It didn't help. I'll switch off these. You know, that's the Output. In fact, I didn't So I hope you guys can see after this board to work on. Actually, I can roll it, so it's not an issue. Um, so um, this is a little experiment about um, how well this camera works. But um, what we really want to talk about is uh, trees. Because we started on Monday, and I said that I finished up today. And um, that's not strictly true. I looked at the schedule, and I saw that I, on the schedule I put down, it would be doing this the whole week. And, uh, and that's fine because uh, the last chapter we want to do in symbol tables, which will start next week. Part of what we're talking about is also part of symbol tables. So it's not a uh, entire, it's not a, definitely not a waste of time. It's exciting stuff for you guys because you're learning about trees. So we said that we have trees, they've got nodes, instances of nodes. And each tree stores some value, and it has a left pointer and a right pointer. So a left reference and a right reference that point to um, the children of the tree. And if I want to go a big, big tree, I have something like that. I can ten in here. This is my root. And let's say left points to this node, which we will do five, and this will point to six. And that's six as no children. We call such notes something special. We call them leaves. So this is called a leaf. Can YouTube see that? Kind of. Uh, oops. Uh, in fact, let me uh, try to fix this light issue. Um, do you mind closing those bar? I think on the right hand side, you need to do something special. <laughs> 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 so the blinds will be closed. 
and we might be able to see a little bit. Okay, fine. So, I know this isn't perfect, but it's. Uh, I'm talking to YouTube folks. Come on, you're not going to pass the course if you can't close the blind. <laughs> It's more complicated than programming. Are we back? It's the same. Oh, okay. It's not, even, it's not even very clean, so I apologize to YouTube for that. Um, one more thing. Let's just see if the fitting with the light settings. Now that didn't make a difference. And one last experiment. Now you can't see the board, of course. Or can you? Oh, that's no, that's the. <laughs> Okay, fine. All right, I'm talking about trees. This is a tree. It's got a root. It's got a five left child. Five has a six right child. And now six has number of children. So this is called a leaf. Like a tree has leaves, except at the top, of course, but our trees are upside down. Um, so that's called a leaf six. Five has a left child, which we'll say is four. And four is also a leaf. And ten has a Right child, let's say it's uh, 20, and 20 is also a leaf. So 20 is a leaf too. So three leaves in this tree, and two of these nodes, they actually have a name, they're called internal nodes. Internal. Okay. This is a binary tree. Because each child has two children, uh, so each node has two children. They may be null, but it's still a, it's still a possibility to add a child here. This tree is not balanced. So the left hand side side subtree of ten is much bigger than the right hand subtree of ten. That's fine. Not all trees need to be balanced. But if they are, they work a little better. So uh, we try to keep them balanced if we can. This tree has another property, which is really important. It's a special kind of tree. It has a name. It's called a BSD. I'll tell you what that means. As soon as I get rid of whatever. Oh, this is all wrong. <laughs> Oh no, no, what did this guy do? You should never have gotten involved in circuits. <laughs> Don't program a circuit. Actually, you can. So, this is a BSD. That stands for one research tree. Now, this kind of rings a bell. Because we've talked about binary search before. Remember that um, right at the start, I played a game where someone, not too long, not too long, not too long. I played a game with Nadia where I guessed the number and she tried to, or she followed the number that I tried to guess. And the best way to do that was using binary search, where um, <laughs> I take a whole range from 0 to 100, and I divide it into 10 say, like, let's see if it's 50. It's a big or small than 50. Then that way we could eliminate half the range. And in a similar way, a binary search tree is used in that way. It's a binary search tree and has a special property. So the key in the left, I'm just going to write the left key, is less than or equal to my key, is less than or equal to the right key.
And every Adam node, you look at its left child and its right child and its own key, you'll see that the left child has smaller keys than the node itself, and the right child has a bigger key than the node itself. That's why I made three like this. Here we have 10. It's insane to try to chip over this for you to like them, but never mind. Here we have a 10. It has, this node has a key of 10. It has a left child with a key of 5, and we know that 5 is less than equal to 10. And it has a right child with a key of 20, and that's bigger than 10. And the same if we look at 5. This one we must hold for all the nodes in the. In the All the nodes in the binary search key. We have this property that the left child's key is less than equal to my key. So the same is true of five. Its left child is four. The key of its left child is four. That's less than five. And on this side of six, that's fine. The same is true for four. Okay, so it doesn't have a left child. That's sad. And it doesn't have a right child. That's sad. Uh, also sad. But the bottom line is that four is still in between those values and that exists. In fact, there's a word for this in mathematics and in logic, and we say that the property holds for this node accuracy. Do you know this word? I don't know if you can't for that, but it's accuracy key, because the left and the right don't exist. Um, same is true for six, accuracy, it holds accuracy for six, and it holds accuracy for 20. So this is the idea of a binary search tree. It's a binary tree, um, we have some leaves, we must have leaves, otherwise the tree is infinite. And um, it satisfies its binary search tree property. The left child is always less than equal to the knee, and I'm always greater than equal to my right child. Thank you, David. Yes, Josh. How um, would it look at the article? Oh, well, then it, oh, well, okay, fine. I'll make them equal if you want. Let's make this a 10. And now let's swap the two tens. Let's put this ten here, and that ten I move to here. <laughs> Why? They're the same. Who would ever know? It will just be between you and me, okay. and the rest of the class. Now, sometimes you do want to be stricter with what you search. You can want to say no duplicates. I'm never going to insert a ten if there's already a ten. If I'm implementing a set, I want to add a lot of integers into a set. And this is a good way of doing it. I don't want to put them in an array because that limits the size. I don't want to put them in a linked list because then if I'm looking, checking if some element in the set, I have to walk down the entire linked list. Even if it's sorted, I can't do binary search on a linked list. For a linked list, Well, we link this. Let's say it's singly linked, and let's say it's sorted. Even, we can even make it sorted. And I've got a pointer to the first element. That's kind of obvious. And I may even have a, a pointer to the last element. But if I want to know if the value uh, 17 is in this linked list, how do I know? I have to start with the start. And I may have to walk down the entire list before I find 17. There's no pointer to the middle of it. I can't go to the middle of the list. I, first, I don't know how long the list is. And even if I did know that it's 10 long, how do you get to the fifth element, the fifth node of the list? Well, you'd have to start the first and walk down five steps, four steps. And that's just about the same as just walking down the whole list and trying to find, checking if we have 17 or not. So for the linked list, it's going to be really slow to find an element. If I want to keep it sorted, I have a similar kind of problem. Every time I insert something and it's sorted, I have to walk down to the right spot and insert it there. If there are n elements in my linked list, then using the notation we've actually learned before, it's going to take roughly n steps to insert anything and n steps to, to check if something is in there. So linked list, not bad, but 
and it's quite expensive. If I have to do this a million times and there are a million items in my link list, that means it's one English billion times that I have to execute this search that they do. Binary search is going to be much faster. In fact, it's going to be like a binary search. If I have 100 elements, it will take me log 2 because I'm always dividing by 2, 100 steps to find elements. And in general, it's going to take roughly log n steps to find anything in the binary search. That's much faster. And for 100, n is 100. Log to n is less than seven. So seven versus hundred. It's a lot of. It's a big. Are you prepared to wait seven seconds or hundred seconds? It might be Okay. So back here. If, let, I was saying that we want to implement a set which can only contain each value once, and in that case, I'm never ever going to make a duplicate node, a duplicate value, because once I spot this thing. I'm going to say, oh, 10 is already in the set, and I'm going to add it again. So we may not have to do this if we implement something like a set. What about a bag? Do you know the bag? Have you done bags in mathematics? Have you done multi sets? So there's something called a bag, or it's also called a multi set. And basically, it means it's like the usual set in mathematics, except you can add the same element more than once. And it keeps track of how many times you've added that element. In that case, I may want to duplicate the node and create the 10, but there's actually a better way to do that in, uh, in that situation. Let me just say, uh, I'm going to change my definition of a node. I'm going to change my definition of a node. I said uh, public, private, perhaps class node, but now I'm going to make a bag node. And it's going to hold elements like before. And let's just for now say that they're ints. I don't want to make it too complicated. But we've seen before that we can parameterize our data classes, data types, and we could say that this is a big item. Anything to be put into the bag. But just for today, we'll stick to int. So int, that's the value, like 10. And now I'm going to have a second field, count, which is the number of times that that value appears in this node or in this whole collection. And then I'm going to have a left and a right. Whoops. It's a bag node. And I need a left and a bag node. Right, that's my whole class. So if this tree at the top were a bag, each of the nodes would have a second field, which is a count. So that would be two, that would be one, there's one four, there's one six, and obviously this 10 will never appear because that would simply move up to two. If I try to add a 10 to this tree, I'll say, oh, we have a 10 stored here. I'll just increment, increment the count. This is, oh, Let's change this back to 20. Anyone 20 in the bag? Okay. We have to, this is our data type. We have this tree. Um, now we have to implement a few operations on the tree. And um, what do we need to in implement? Uh, definitely we want to implement insert because how otherwise can we construct the tree? I want to insert, add stuff to the tree, so I'm going to write insert. Uh, and I also want to implement contains, check if something is in the tree or not. Often you don't want to add something to a set, you just want to see is this element in the set or not. If we're really working with sets, then we want to add stuff like intersection or union or perhaps a complement of the set. Um, and we may even want to add an operation in any case that deletes some node of the key. 
And we really did start on this last time, but let's finish that up. So now we move one step back. I'm not talking about bags anymore, I'm just going to use regular nodes. I'll go here to talk in. It's obviously answered. I mean, who would want to know this? What is the question? It's not even a question, it's just a statement. It must be the answer to talk in. I would have an answer. Okay, right. So I want to insert into a binary key. Um, and I'm going to write my routine for that. Public. If you send back a node, So, um, you know, already now you should be a little alarmed because why did, does it return a node? Well, we could do this iteratively where we walk down the tree to the right spot, the parent of the new node, and we just add a node there. But in almost all implementations, it's much easier, a million times easier, to do this recursively. So, insert is going to say, I accept a tree, I don't care what tree, but I accept the tree, and I will I will send back the tree with this new value inserted into it. So the return value of insert will be a tree with value added to the tree. Say again? Value added. Many shops these days have value added back. I don't know if the compose is the component. I'm not familiar with the compose commercial operations on this level. Okay. Or perhaps I am, who knows? Okay. Um, how do I insert? Well, we have to think of different cases. What happens if we receive the empty key? Oops. Sorry, that's a cell phone going off. Uh, got a message. I wonder if it's about the clock. Oh, they want to put me alone. I want that to spawn. Let's switch off the sound. Okay. Right. What happens if I want to insert into an empty tree? I'm given an empty tree, a null tree. I mean, that's a possibility. Tree is null. If I'm given an empty tree and I'm asked to insert value into the empty tree, and to return the a tree with value inserted into it. Well, that's kind of an easy case. If the tree is empty, so I'm given an empty tree and I need to return an empty tree with value inserted, new value. That's easy, I, know I, I need to return exactly this. So I need to return one new node with new value as a key and a null left pointer and a null right pointer. <coughs> so let's write that. Uh, if the key is empty, return a new node. And let's say that the constructor of node accepts all these parameters, well, three. The key, the value, and the left pointer, and the right pointer. <coughs> so I just create a new note and I send that note back. This will be sent back and it's exactly what the user asked. I was given an entity and now I'm returning a key with no new value insert. Okay, otherwise, what could happen? What else could happen? So if it's not empty, I already have a key. I'm already in the situation where I'm given a tree with some value and it may have a left subtree which may be empty or not and it may have a right subtree which may be empty or not. <coughs> so I'm given a tree, its root node has value, I want to insert new value. 
what options do I have to consider? What is the very first thing I have to check? What happens if <coughs> this new value and value are the same? Okay, then we have to decide, are we going to allow duplicates in the three or not? Let's for now say we are not going to allow duplicates, it will make our life a little easier. So, in the case, I say, out B, if B value is the same as the new value, so this is equal to new value. And I don't have to do any work because new value already appears in the tree. It's the same as value. So this tree that I was given is exactly the one I'm going to send back. It is a tree with new value in it. So in this case, I can just return the tree I was given. Are you all happy about this? Why are you crying? Are you crying? Oh, yeah. you understand? Everybody must understand this. You cannot perceive it. I complete understanding. No, some, someone is willing to admit, someone has the guts to admit that they simply cannot grasp it. Yes, Simone? Yes. So, I'm sorry, I should have. Mm -hmm. I'm given a tree for three. I must return a new tree, which is the same as three, except that new values have been inserted. And if I'm not going to have duplicates, then this will do exactly that. Yes, Josh, you also. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is not a bag. Uh, we're now basically implementing a set. But that's not how a tree should work in general. A tree should, usually, we do allow duplicates in trees. And in general, if we should, well, if we're really making a data type that we reuse in many settings for many purposes, we probably want to see where you can set a flag which says allow duplicates or don't allow duplicates. In any case, but for now, there are no duplicate rules in the Okay, though. So, uh, I know the tree is not null, it's 22 in your tree. And I've handled the case where new value is equal to value, tree's value. So, we now know that new value is not, in the else case, equal to value. So it's either less than or greater than. What happens if it's less than this value? What do I need to do? Well, I really need to take this net subtree and insert new value right here somewhere. Or the same if it's greater than, I need to insert in the right subtree. How am I going to get new value into this left subtree? This is recursion, so I can just invoke the magic of recursion and say else. Okay, I'm dealing with a case where new value belongs in the left subtree of this tree. So if new value belongs in the left subtree, I can recursively insert it there. I can say insert into my left subtree. So that's three dot left new value. So I can call insert recursively. What will happen? Well, it will send me back a new tree. with new value added somewhere. But if I don't do anything with that return value, it's going to disappear. It's just going to be back to If I just ignore the return value of insert, I'm going to lose it. It's hanging around here somewhere now. Left is still pointing to my old thing without insert. But this is the new tree I want, with new value added. So I'm going to change my left pointer. 
disappointed with this new section we have left this given circuit. I'm oh, sorry, new value of the new circuit. So I'm going to say v.net becomes insert into the net tree new value. This will insert new value into the left subtree, this one, and it will send back a new tree, and I'm going to point my left to it. I'm going to update my left and put it here. So, where am I now? I was sent a tree, I changed its left hand side, and now this tree is pointing to something with the new value inserted in the left subtree, and the right subtree is all the same. A tree is the whole tree that I've inserted new value into. So I'm going to return tree. I have to return something. I don't only want to return the left sub tree. Well, why not? Scott? Why is it wrong to say, why, why couldn't I have said return? I mean, we need to figure this out because we need to understand all this. Three dot left new value. Why is, is this not right? What is it right? Should I have written that? Scott? <laughs> Uh, I know for a fact I don't want to be wrong. Uh, you want to return just the left side, you want to return one piece of the left side, you need to return with the light. <coughs> and it's slightly better. Also, that's the issue of focus. Sorry, Scott, I was listening to every word you said. Um, I don't only want to return, I don't want to throw away the stream. Yes, you're right. I mean, the caller, whoever called me, sent me this tree, it wanted the same tree, except that new values can insert it. So we can't just throw away the root of the tree and the right side tree and only return the left side tree. What I'll do is I'll just update the left side tree and then return the whole tree. If I only return this new return value of insert, I'll in effect be throwing away this root and the right side tree. So I have to return the whole thing. Here, I didn't have to return the whole thing because if the tree was null initially, um, well, it doesn't make sense to return null, it would still be an entity. What I had to return was this tree with the new value node added. And that's what I returned. When I was given a tree where the values are equal, I could just return the identical tree because that is the tree that has the same as the original but with new value inserted. And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm returning this whole tree, but it's been changed so that new value is going to be It's been changed by this recursive form. Okay, so I'm going to delete this incorrect statement. And I'm going to write the last else. Else. Do I even have to write the each statement? No, because there are a number of options left. Tree is not null. The values are not equal. New value is not smaller than tree dot the value. So the only option left is that the new value must be larger, greater than p dot value. And I can do the same thing. I can say, um, change the right subtree of p by inserting into the right subtree the new value. And then you just return the whole tree. Because it's been modified now. It's the right child has been changed. And that's the end of my whole routine. I'm pretty sure it's pretty invisible on YouTube, but that's on the way so. I thought I was going to lose my whole connector, but it didn't know it happened. Why do bad things happen to good people? I'm too beautiful to lose my identity. I'll find it. Okay, now, is everybody happy with insert? Because this is the difficult part. This is more difficult than what I want to show you next. What I want to show you next is fine. 
And it's so easy, I will have a volunteer help me write it. Let's just find someone who's asleep. I will demonstrate that even while asleep, you can write this routine. And it's beautiful, all the color. So, um, second routine, we definitely will need something that checks if a certain value is inside the tree or not. So, that's going to return a Boolean. True if it is in the tree or um, false if it's not. And I can call this fine, but there's a standard naming convention in, in Java where if you have a container that contains a lot of elements, like an array or a hint list, a tree, then the standard name for fine is container. This makes life like, easier for all of us. Okay. I'm giving a tree. And I want to search for a value. And I will give you a hint, even though you don't know who you are. I will write out the code. That's called T. You please null. Then I have to return something. L is the dot value. If this is the value I'm looking for, then I have to return something else if value belongs in the left sub -tree. Then I have to return something else. Obviously, I just return something. Okay, right. Who's going to help me write this? Let's just find a picture. Bro, can I run? Is it behind you? No, no, no. no. I, don't want, I want to go to the lady, cyan, dark cyan, almost lady. What? Patrick. Say so again? Man, are you in the squad? Yeah. I've never seen you before. <laughs> you come every, every day? Oh, I'm sorry, man. I've never heard your name. Can you come to the tax? You what? If you don't know. But I'm not there. <laughs> Google. Google, Google. Google knows nothing. I'm just using other people's knowledge. You should make your own Never mind. Anyways, uh, Manfred. Let's see, what do I write? Tree is null. Is the value in the tree? No, okay. Return null. <laughs> is that okay? No. <laughs> Java doesn't know no. It needs to send back a boolean. You only have two choices. Excellent. Okay, great. So, no values in the empty tree. If I see the tree is null, it's empty, there's nothing in it, value is in it, I return false immediately. Excellent, Manfred, you're making great progress. You may be a little too clever. I may have to find someone stupid. It won't be hard, but because I'm very good at finding. Okay, right. Tree is not null, so we have a real tree, it's not empty as before, we don't have the easy option. But we see that value is exactly equal to tree dot value. Manfred? Okay, excellent. You guys are doing so well. No! Value is less than tree dot value. I don't know if it's in the tree, but if it is, it will probably be in the left sub tree. What do I return? Uh, oh, what do you want? Use contains, contains again. Okay, I'll write contains. That's it, right? This is like a court, Manfred. You're like in, you're in court. Imagine you're in the Oscar Pistorius trial or somewhere. You can't just shake your head. You have to have verbal 
feedback so that you, you can hear what you're saying. <laughs> now he's crying. <laughs> What? G? Oh, left G. You mean feet of left? Okay, why do you, why did you suggest this? <laughs> <laughs> and man, but always makes sense. <laughs> so, that is less than feet of value. Does that mean it's in the left sub feet of uh, Exactly. It should be. It may not be. But if it is anywhere in this key, it will be in the left sub -key. Because if um, any key is smaller than my key, it will be in my left shoulder. So if value is less than three of value, it might be somewhere in my left sub -tree. So I search through my left sub -tree recursively. And whatever answer it returns. If it says true, then it found the key, and yeah, I'll return true as well. And if this contains return false, it means it wasn't in the left sub -tree. It can't be in the right sub -tree. It's not equal to my value. So I'll also return false. Okay, so this isn't a big mystery. It's a metric call. Like so. Okay, so that's three that contains. Well, it's not three that contains, it's just contains. It's recursion, it's so easy. We didn't have to declare any local variable. We didn't have a single local variable. Of course, we had the parameters, but we can't do anything without the parameters, depending on what we do. But with recursion, I didn't have to declare any local variable. If this was um, iteration, I would have had to declare some local variable. Because I need, I would have needed to, is that the truth or not? I am not sure. But I would have needed uh, probably to declare some. Definitely for insert. But here, not so much. Now, Benford, would you like to nominate anyone else for the speaking class challenge? Pick anyone. Oh, <laughs> how does this affect you again? Yes, that yeah. one. What? Johan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Jan. <laughs> Benfin has dominated you. <laughs> he doesn't like you. <laughs> Let's have a little challenging. Out of four minutes, no, you say it quite well. So what I was going to show you is how to do contain without Recursion. You mustn't do this. You must love recursion. If you don't love recursion already, you must learn to love it. Because it's really powerful. It will help you out in a lot of cases. If you can just get yourself to believe that, oh, my routine is correct, my routine is correct. So if I want to do something and I find that I can call myself, I call myself. If you don't believe that your routine is correct, then recursion kind of breaks down. If I didn't believe, I mean, if Manfred didn't believe that contains for actually find the value of the left sub -key. He wouldn't have been confident enough to, re to call contains recursively and just send back that answer without any checking. So recursion is really powerful, you must learn to love it. One minute. Uh, next two contains without uh, recursion. And this is um, a little bad because it's actually quite easy if you do it without recursion. But let's just see, public, boolean, contains, I've got a node T, I want to find a value and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the start, I'm not even going to use a local variable, I'm going to start at the top, I'm going to use T, that parameter, I'm going to modify it, but it's only my local copy that's modified. And I'm going to walk through the tree until I find either the node containing value or a leaf. So, while I haven't reached the leaf, I'm going to carry on walking down the tree. But if ever I get to a leaf, 
that one equals stop and I'll say false. That is not in the tree, but it's a symbol. What can you um, Sorry, not equal. Absolutely right. So while it's not a leap, I'm going to walk down. What am I going to do in each node? I'm going to check if p got value is equal to the one I'm looking for. If this is what I want, I'm immediately going to return true. So if this is the node that I'm looking for, I'm going to return true immediately. I found it. Otherwise, I'm going to say p becomes if that is in the left sub tree, tree becomes its own left. So I walk to the left, tree dot left. Else, tree becomes tree dot right. So this is deceptively simple, but I don't want you to even know this. This is like bubble so Just forget if I ever told you about it. Except that I'll probably ask it in the test somewhere. So um, this is a way of iteratively finding something. In the <coughs> it's not much faster. On our modern computers, any speed advantage that this may have over the other is absorbed in the pipeline. So the costs are just about the same. Okay. I'm going to stop now. I'm going to back to my office and find my connector. Oh, I'm so sorry, YouTube. And I'm going to stop this broadcast. And how do I stop the whole? Oh,